Hi, Shani Fannies. Welcome back to Shani Banani. I'm Shani, and my schizoaffective disorder is back. So that's fun. Oh, hi, Shani. Hi. So I just wanted to make a quick intro. Um, this is going to be a very long video before I show you the footage that Danny and I filmed together last night. As you can tell from the title of this video, uh, my schizoaffective disorder is back. This is something I have not talked to you guys about a whole lot because it hasn't really happened since I started YouTube. I had like a tiny episode in 2017, but it hasn't been a constant thing since way before I started YouTube. So I will say that I know it's gonna go away because I've experienced it before. I know the signs, I know the symptoms. Um, I was diagnosed with it before, I was diagnosed this time again, and it's basically, it's, it's a combination. It kind of comes from schizophrenia and bipolar. Hi guys, uh, Shani in editing here. I wanted to come on and read to you the actual definition of um, schizoaffective disorder. Schizoaffective disorder, a mental health condition including schizophrenia and mood disorder symptoms. Schizoaffective disorder is a combination of symptoms of schizophrenia and mood disorder such as depression or bipolar disorder. Symptoms may occur at the same time or at different times. So basically last night, Danny and I sat down together and we filmed a video telling you kind of how it's been for me, telling you how it's been from his point of view and all of that. So I'm gonna show you that footage in a minute, but I first just wanted to intro this and say um, and ask you to please be kind in the comments. Um, the comments are gonna be heavily uh, monitored for this video uh, because it's, it's something where I'm very sensitive about and it's not necessarily something that I want to share with anybody, but I know that I need to because um, I know that there are gonna be so many other people out there that will hear this and know that they're not alone and then there will also be people that'll hear about this and learn about it and learn to, you know, how to help their loved ones and all the reasons that I do what I do, I'm doing it again. So just know that I'm real sensitive about this. I'm very nervous to share this with you and it's embarrassing to me. To me, it's very, very embarrassing. But basically, yeah, my schizoaffective disorder is back. I've caught a few episodes on camera. You're gonna see those. And so let's go ahead and switch over to the video of me and Danny. Okay, so I actually just ended an episode. I'm kind of still coming out of it. So we thought this would be a good time for Danny to step in and see, and like, tell them how it's been for you. From your point of view, how's it been affecting you? All the things. Well. It's really fun, huh? It's extremely fun. Yeah. If fun were a bag of hot crap that I had to hold and clean up over and over again. <laughs> it's not like you're making it. It's just, that's what oh, it yeah. is. Yeah, I agree. So, um, it's a bag of hot crap is what it is. It's extremely concerning. It's hard to watch. Um, my heart breaks all every time that sh this happens. Um, sad for her, sad for not not sad to her, if that makes a difference, you know what I mean? Like sad for her because she's got to go through this crap, that she can't find any peace, that she can't find any resolve to this thing yet. And it's just taxing on energy and, and patience. And you just want to be there for her, but you know, there's really nothing you can do. Yeah. You know, we, we try and bring her out whatever we can do by breathing, by singing, by just trying to be positive. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and it's just hard to watch. It's hard to watch. It's extremely hard to watch as a husband because you start thinking weird stuff like, you know, how do I fix this? What What's the fix? What's the what's the magic button or the magic bullet or whatever. And there's just not anything like that. It's, I think it's just comes down to be being patient and being as comforting as possible. And, and just, it's a time thing. I think just like last time, it just takes time for her to uh, chill out in a way and, you know, 
relax and, and feel safe, feel comfortable in the new environment and whatnot. I wanna, it, it's, it kind of falls in the line of when you go uh, dissociative. Yeah. So you start zoning out and you just start looking. Uh, one of your tell, tell signs now is your eye will kind of twitch. It, you do this kind of a thing. Kind of a deal. Not, not blinking, just one eye. You'll just start doing this kind of a thing. Yeah. You're intensely thinking like you're listening to somebody. Like if you were to talk to me like right now, like. It's, it's yeah, like that. It's like intense the, listening. A lot of the time I will say to him, it's hard to do because I'm hearing mm -hmm. straight voices, but I'll say, I can't hear you. Yeah. And I'll try to like read his lips because. Mm -hmm. Like we're we're Luckily, getting used to her sign language again because yeah, I'm, I mean that's the only way I can almost communicate with her, you know. Luckily, I'm already a, a lip reader because mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with people's mouths because it's my biggest insecurity. So luckily, I can, and also I can just like read him and yeah. and so he'll just yeah, a lot of body language, breathe, breathe. yeah, breathing in and out. Yeah. Now the You're good safe. the good thing is you are yeah. pretty responsive to that. Mm -hmm. So, you oh, know, yeah. in different yeah, yeah. in different things where you're like zoning yeah. out, you are very responsive, which tells me that you're mm -hmm. in there still. Oh, I'm there. I just am bombarded by yeah. it. It's just noise, the, right? Yeah, but I'm yeah. totally there. And, and I mean, there are times when I'm not there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I feel like that's kind of when it's a mixture of the schizo with yeah. the, I've kind of, with the normal Trump PTSD. Yeah. I've kind of just attributed it to, or just make it in my mind like you have headphones on with really loud, yeah, that's obnoxious like. mm -hmm. music or something that's just driving you nuts and you can't hear what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Now it's still scary because that's a lot of noise. Yeah. When it's usually just this quiet and it's just me, you know, that's a lot of noise in your head. So that's mm -hmm. very concerning. So you've pretty much been in this funk all day, every time I've seen yeah. you. So today's Father's Day for us. Um, and I think that that definitely like hard things exacerbate it more, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. So like it's happening every day, but it gets harder if something circumstantially hard is happening. So like Father's Day for me is the worst day of the year, not because, I mean, I love my stepdad and I love Danny's dad. Um, <clears throat> it was just a painful day for me. Maybe I'll talk about that another time. Um, just for many reasons, but but yeah, so today I found myself out of it all day mm -hmm. and hearing voices all day and seeing dad yeah. three times. Where did you see him? In our house. And then I went and looked out the window and I saw him out there. Mm. And I know he's not there. It's very hard watching you go through this from a husband's point of view. It's very hard. And I feel bad for you, but I'm also there for you. I'll hold you until you come out, until you can hear me and, and do whatever you need to for me to do for you. Because I know, just like last time, you're going to get over this. This one's just going to be a little bit more potent, I think. Because I think what's happened in this one specifically is you kind of freaked yourself out because you've been through this before. And it was scary back then. And it's scary now. But that, I think that makes it a little bit more potent because you realize what's going on. The last time it was going on, nobody really ever knew what was going on because you were like, I don't know what's going on. So let's yeah. not really engage in this hard. However, what are we, what, what are we, what are we even doing that's good for you now? Got you on a new medication. Yes. Even though it's come with some side effects that aren't so happy, nausea and whatnot. But we're thinking those will slow down eventually, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they put me on a new medication. It's called Abilify. Um, it's supposed to hear help with hearing voices and seeing people that aren't there. Um, and I've been on it for almost two weeks now. She put me on this medication and it made me really, really sick at first. So basically what I did was I, she said that if it, if you have any weird side effects that are kind of unbearable to split it in half. So I did. So the next day I split it in half and the symptoms were still there. And so then the next day I split it into a third, symptoms were still there. Uh, I mean like side effects, I'm sorry, not symptoms. Yeah, side, effects. side effects and symptoms. So the symptoms- The side effects, by the way, are extreme nausea. Like to the point like, that I feel like I'm gonna die. Yeah, like I wanna go to the hospital, it's yeah. so bad. Um, 
but it but it was helping it was helping with the voices so mm -hmm. it was helping with the symptoms but the side effects were really really bad so then on like the fourth day i think i was like what if i just don't take it at all today and see if i'm this nauseated because maybe this nausea is coming from something else so i didn't take it the fourth day and i wasn't that nauseous so we knew that's what it was and so it, at least at least i knew what was going to happen and i could prepare um, every day to be like, okay, you're going to feel this extreme nausea, but you got to pick your battles. It's either going to be voices, you know, telling you to do horrible things to yourself, or it's going to be, you're going to be so nauseous that you just have to lay down in bed and all day. And so, um, this isn't permanent. They are thinking this is just, um, the side effects are not going to last forever. And also this I probably won't be on this medication forever because um, at least in my case with my history um, I don't know if it's like this for everybody with schizoaffective disorder because I haven't studied it that much but I just know with my case that it does go away and it's usually an episode that usually happens around the time of something very stressful happening so so we're pretty confident that until it does go away which Are you hearing them right now? Yeah. What are you saying? Nothing. I don't want to say that on the video. Okay. 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 That will figure. Can, can you finish the sentence? Sorry. To breathe. Breathe. It's okay. Can you say it? No. Can you finish the sentence? As soon as you come out of this, yeah. I'm good. The last time she went through this, and this time, we've noticed the pattern of high, super high stress uh, situations trigger this thing. Um, and with our big, huge move into this new house, which by the way, doesn't it look so pretty? Good job. She did all this. I love this up here, this this rainbow thing that's coming off the light. It's like this little rainbow pattern, it's really cute. Um, and even the doctor said, you know, as time goes on, as you get settled and as you get more comfortable here and feel safer here, that will, all that stress will start going away, which will probably make all this stuff start to go away a bit faster. I hope so. That's the hope. It's been really fun and so grateful for this experience for me to be able to learn and grow and so fuck voices hi mom <laughs> but yeah that's something I just have to do I have to I tell them to F off at least 20 times a day and most of the time it's out loud if I'm alone sometimes Which is great. sometimes you do see it yeah I will I will catch you sometimes just yelling and sometimes I think it's at me because you just say, shut up, or stop it. Yeah. You're, yeah. Trying, to, you're trying to take control, at least, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. they don't overflow you too yeah. harshly. And one of the things they say all the time, I want to make this clear because I want everyone to know that I'm safe. Like, Oh, yeah. She's I'm, not a danger to herself or no, others. Um, I, I, um, I'm embarrassed. I'm an embarrassment. That's why I did come to dinner tonight at your dad's house because... I just well, didn't want to take away from Father's I, Day, I and, I knew, an and I knew that thing. today is the worst day of the year for me already, and I was right. We were both right. Yeah, for, but... the, for the record, I think that's actually very uh, adult of you to be like, look, I'm not in a good place. I don't yeah. want to I don't want to have an episode, you know, mm -hmm. there or anything that somebody's going to freak out about. Mm -hmm. So I think that was actually a pretty adult choice that we made, you made. Thanks. You really missed out on the party or whatever. And it's a good thing I didn't go because it's been rough yeah, today. Yeah, it's been a rough day today. But we knew it would be, so at least we prepared and I had things planned that I could do, mm -hmm. you know, to distract myself. So one of the biggest things, so huge warning, trigger warning for suicide, real quick. Um, one of the things I hear the most from the voices is that I need to kill myself, um, that everyone else will be better off without me, blah, blah, blah. Those are things that you hear with depression too and stuff like that, and you know, suicidal ideation and other mental health issues. 
lot of people hear voices telling them, but like, this is different. This is like actual, I'm actually hearing people talking to me and convincing me or trying to convince me that it's the right thing to do. And every time, every single time, I literally will stop whatever I'm doing and I'll say, fuck you, because taking my life is no longer an option. So fuck off is what I say every time because it's just not so even subconsciously when I'm dissociated and when I'm when I'm hearing these voices I've said it in my brain since what happened in February it's just not possible it's just not an option for me anymore and so I'm proud of that like I am really really proud that I can that Identify I can that and yeah and fight back yeah, yeah and just fight back immediately and just shut it down yep. tell it to shut up and go on with my day. So that's good. You know, like I know I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm not going to hurt anybody else. It just sucks to have, to hear it constantly. We have been able to identify at least three male voices mm -hmm. and then she will hear a crying baby somewhere. So I'll spend lots of nights in the middle of the night, just going around the house, looking for these crying babies. Yeah. That's something that happened the first time, remember? Mm -hmm. And it was really bad. It's not as bad as it was the first time, but it does happen. And that's really frustrating because as a woman, I naturally feel motherly instincts that if I hear a baby cry, like that's all I can hear. And so I need to find it and help it. And why isn't anybody helping it? And where's mm -hmm. its mother? And am I its mother? And did I have a baby and I forgot about it? Like it's maddening and it's really, really scary, but I usually just, I'll go throughout the entire house, including your basement and everything. And when I realize that I don't find the baby and I can allow my logical side to tell me like, stay strong. I know you're hearing this, but it's not real. There's not a baby here. There's nobody, there's no men here talking to you. There's, you know what I mean? Like, I just have to practice it. It's hard. It's not easy, but it just takes practice. For the record, so far, I actually think you're doing pretty good. I mean, it's been a, a big bag of hot crap, but at least we're trying to identify it and work on it. You know, last time you just hid in the room. Mm -hmm. and kind of blamed it more on depression and, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. We didn't even really talk about it. Talking to your therapist, you've been talking to the psychiatrist mm -hmm. about all these yeah. things, right? Yep. Psychiatrist, psychologist, and they're helping me so, so much. And I'm okay with that. Like last time it was really embarrassing and it was really, and it's still really embarrassing, but I also know because of last time, I know that these voices thrive on you know, hiding it and secrecy and and loneliness, they thrive on that. So, um, same thing as their eating disorder. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the more I can out it, the better the outcome. Because last time, it was three times worse than this, mm -hmm. right? At I mean, least, it was yeah. way worse last least, time. Yeah. So we're just trying to get ahead of it. Yeah. Sounds like the birds have something to say. Okay. I can't believe they shut up right when they They always do every do they time. Really? Every single time. And the birds have something to say now. You brat. <laughs> they'll stop that when we start talking, they'll start talking. Okay. And then on three, if we stop one, talking, two, one, three. two, three. I'm sorry that you have to go through this too. I can't imagine having to watch my loved one. Like if you were going through this, oh I don't know what I would do. I would be calling my mom every day, all day. It's I, tough. I don't, I don't know how you do it. It's just, I have a lot of faith. He's incredible, isn't he? Yeah, I get through this. This mm -hmm. isn't going to last forever, I know it. Nope. I can feel it, so we just need time, prayers, therapy, meds, all the things I'm doing. I'm really getting ahead of it because I know we are almost done with this video. At least they're pretty singing and not like screeching. Okay, I'll do the outro later. <laughs>
Thanks for watching guys. Um, I know this was a really long video. Thank you for those who sat through it. And um, if you guys have any questions about this, please leave them below because I would like to do a Q&A about it. So if there's anything that you were wondering either for myself or for Danny that we didn't cover in this video, please, please, please tell me below and we'll do a Q&A together about it. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about it just when I feel strong enough to talk about it. This is something where I'm getting episodes every day, but like I was just saying, the meds are helping it a lot and I'm getting a lot, lot better. And so that's really good. So I'm glad, um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to this and thank you for your support and your patience with me. Um, and I know I'm gonna be okay. And hopefully the more I let it out, the more I talk about it, the less it will be there, you know? Maybe it'll go away faster if I like expose it, you know, to as many people as I can maybe, I don't know. So anyway, yeah, okay, that's it. I'll see you guys next time for another video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching, bye. Love you.